G'day, uh, my name is Nick Bowditch. Um, thank you for following along on my stuff. Today I want to talk about influencer marketing and more precisely how you might find somebody to be an influencer for your brand or your business in the marketplace. Influencer marketing has basically come about because people don't trust ads. So, you know, there's, there's a whole lot of advertising you can do now with mediums like Facebook and so on that don't look like ads, that have much more um, credibility and much more cut through with people if they see it as a sponsored story from one of their friends, to use an old term, um, or something like that. It's much more believable and legit than if it's an ad in the paper or an ad on TV. So that has been twisted around now to finding other humans who are in their network or who they admire or who they're similar to or, or whatever, giving your product or service to them and saying, listen, can you tell the world about how good this is if you believe it to be true um, and, and you feel comfortable doing that. So the first thing about influencer marketing is it's starting, just starting to get a little bit murky where you know, people just splash out anything, wear any shirt, say, oh, I'm using this and whatever. And it's starting to be like old school marketing of, you know, George Clooney with an espresso. Well, who knows if he actually drinks an espresso or likes it. But, you know, we're, we're convinced that he is because of that. But, but people are starting to get a bit more cynical about that and saying, well, he's probably just taking the cash, right? So that's why an influencer who isn't George Clooney, but is somebody who the market can relate to or knows or admires or something, it might be George Clooney, but it's more likely now to be people who are, you know, just everyday people, they might have a big following on Instagram or whatever, but their recommendation of your product and service is so much more legit and so much more accepted by the market than if it was just a one-way ad or they had, you know, people acting in it who they didn't know or didn't trust or, or whatever. A few, a few studies this year have really backed up the, the worth and value and success of influencer marketing and how important it is to go on with it from now on. Um, because these studies were all done this year. The first one is a study from Thomason that says businesses currently using influencers to do some marketing for them are making six dollars or six and a half dollars for every one dollar they spend on that influencer marketing. So an ROI of six and a half X is pretty good uh, for advertising that you don't really, not, not really sure whether it's going to work or not. It's absolutely working. That's the first thing. The second thing is a, a study that was um, commissioned by Turner Broadcasting in the States that showed influencer marketing will, in the next little while, surpass TV as the most effective advertising um, medium. So the, the, the KPIs and the measurements and the metrics that go into what is most effective for them included sales and new accounts and different things like that. But the power of it is underlied by the fact that you know it's been compared to TV, which in the advertising world has always been you know, the the most expensive, seen as the most um, broad spreading, uh, you know, most most distributed sort of advertising content you can have, and yet. Influencer marketing is going to surpass that shortly, um, which is, you know, it's just pretty, pretty powerful metric. The third one is, is another study by another broadband company that showed influencer marketing will in the next little while reach 50% of digital marketing spend. So the digital marketing spend is, is huge, right, at the moment, and pretty soon one half of that big bucket of cash is going to be spent on influencers by businesses like yours who want to reach people by convincing them that somebody they know or admire or respect or can relate to uses your product or service. So I do a little bit of this stuff. People um, you know, have, have given me different things to test drive or uh, you know, uh, I wear their shirt and, and they give me some money for it or they give me some product for it or whatever. Um, now, I'm pretty picky about it and, and, and I say no to a lot of things that I just don't don't believe in or don't use or whatever it might be, I, I, I'm, I'm not really for sale in that way. Although, if, if someone came to me with a product or service which I liked or which added value to my family or to my life or that I used already and said, listen, will you wear our shirt while you do your speaking gigs or will you blog about it or whatever if we give you this, then, then yeah, I, I would think about that as long as I believed in the product or service and it was aligned to my values and, and stuff like that. So. You know, someone like me might be a good might be a good target for someone like you, or someone might you know with a really really big Instagram following, or you know a really narrow following that's just of the people you really want to reach. So here's here's kind of six or seven things that I think you should think about when you are looking for an influencer for your business. The first overarching thing you need to remember is it has to be based in storytelling. Now, I know I bang on about storytelling all the time, but 
in this instance, customers are the storytellers, right? So, so what you're doing is grabbing a customer out of the out of the ranks of all the customers as far as they're concerned and saying, you can now tell my story. Here, here's the story that I want you to tell and you can put your own spin on it and whatever, but I'd like you to tell that story to the market, to the masses for us. So you're making customers storytellers and you're making one particular customer a storyteller to other customers. So it's not you saying our product or service is wicked, you know, you should use it, you'd be mad if you don't, it's, it's awesome, it's this and that. It's someone they trust or, or, you know, happy to take a recommendation from or whatever telling them that it is. So that's the first thing. The second thing is don't worry too much about the numbers, right? In, the, in this day and age, like, you know, somebody might have a million Instagram followers. That doesn't necessarily mean they're a good influencer for your market, for the product that you want them to promote to the people you want it to promote it to. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff, I read a lot of people around with big Instagram following who so you wouldn't necessarily want aligned with your product or service. So don't get too caught up in, oh, okay, I only want somebody if they have 100,000 fans or you know, 2 million Twitter followers or whatever. There's, there's something to be said for that kind of reach. But really, you're still narrow casting. You're still trying to find that one person, that avatar in your business to sell your product to. So don't worry too much about someone having millions and millions of followers. They have to have a decent sort of following. Um, but there's other factors, right? Including, is the platform that they're really good at the platform that's right for you? Is your product really Insta friendly? In that case, you want someone who's big on Instagram. Um, if you know, if someone, if you're wanting to do stuff on Twitter, then you want a Twitter evangelist, for instance, or, or whatever, right? So think about because you might have different influences on different channels and different platforms. So think about whether the platform that they're especially big on or especially good at using is the platform that you want to speak to the market with, right? Third thing then is well. Some people say to me, oh, I, I, don't want that, I don't want that person to be an influencer for my brand because they do something similar with it when my competition, or they are my competition. And I kind of think, well, yeah, you do want, you do want that person. I mean, if they're directly in competition with you, then no, you, you don't want that. But if it's a complementary business to yours or a complementary product, to what you're selling to the same market and they've got a really good name or they've got a really good um, you know, reputation or service history or something like that, then maybe you do want that person. So don't just rule out people who compete in the same market with you because they might be able to be aligned next to you and you might be able to then help them with their marketing as well. Fourth one is pretty important <laughs> and it's basically, are they a dick? Right? You need to do a little bit of background check here because, you know, even if someone's got a really big following and they're really good on Instagram, you want to, you've got a really Insta-friendly product and they're, you know, a young, young female person and that's who you want to reach and, and all that, and you don't know something about them which could come out down the track that's not great, then your product or service is aligned with whatever that little mess up is, all right? So just think really carefully about... Um, having a really good look at these people, are they, you know, are they a dick, basically? Or, or are they likely to turn out to be a dick into the future? That's, that's important too. The next thing is maybe ask your network who to go and seek out, right? Because your network, I mean, you, you see your business and your product from the insular, subjective inside of it, right? So you don't really know who your network is admires or relates with or, or looks up to or is interested in or whatever. So so that you find the right person for them. Remember, it's not finding the right person for you. It's finding the right person for your market. So ask the market, ask the network, you know, who, who should we get to do this? Who's, who's a reliable person? Who's, who do you love? Who do you like? Who do you look up to? Who do you think's a dick, right? And you can use your network to choose them. And then ask, you know, there has to be a payment Right? Somebody's going to pay. And so is that payment going to be coin, cash, money? Or is that payment going to be product? You know, payment in kind or some sort of mix of both. You know, if you are, um, if you are General Motors Holden, then the payment might be that, you know, uh, somebody gets a car for 12 months or whatever to drive around and they blog and they take photos with it and all that sort of thing. And you get the, you get the ROI of that because their market says, oh, that person's a GMH. Fan, so I might go and buy one of them too, or test drive it, or whatever. But there's no actual coin, there's no cash that's changed hands here, it's just the product. 
But then again, you know, maybe you're a hosting service or a software or something, and you don't, that person doesn't need your product so much, but, you know, it'd be nice if you paid them, because remember, you've got to have a budget for this stuff anyway, um, so if it comes out of the budget, whatever your budget is, moderate, whether it's modest or whether it's quite extravagant, it's still, you know, that's how you, that's what you have to decide, basically, is, you know, are you going to give someone a, a car, are you going to give someone product and, and, and a shirt, or are you going to give them money in their bank as if they're being paid as any other advertising medium you would choose. And then finally, the most important thing is you need to manage the expectations of the influencer and 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 from the influencer's point of view, manage their expectation of you, right? It's the only way this can fall apart is if someone says to you down the track, oh, I, um, or if you say to the influencer down to the track, down the track, oh, I, you said you were going to do six blog posts, you've only done one. And they go, oh, I didn't say that. I said we'd do one or two. You know, so you've got to you've got to have it in writing what the deal is going to be. Manage your expectations on both sides. And remember, uh, as, my, as my very first mentor <laughs> told me, and she still rings in my ears from her saying it, if there's if you don't write the rules down, people make up their own. So manage the expectations. Make sure there's a contract in place with these certain deliverables. This is this is what we're paying you for, or what we're giving you a car for, or, or whatever. So you please please do that by these deadlines. And um, really, you can't go wrong. I, I wish you well. I hope you find someone who's well aligned with your product or service if this is the way you want to go down. Um, because, you know, I think in 2016 and especially 2017, influencers are going to be pretty much everything, especially in social and digital. So this is a really good time to get in now with one or two or many people who you can have on your books then to call on and say, can you promote this? You know, you're going on TV tomorrow. Can you wear this shirt? Whatever it might be. Um, think about humans trusting humans because we trust humans a lot more than we trust ads. All right, have a great, great day. I hope this has been really helpful. Hit me up if you have any questions. You can find me on Insta and Twitter at, at Nick Bowditch or on Facebook. My Facebook page is facebook.com slash The Real Nick Bowditch. And I will see you soon.